Hey, Mr. Sloth. Hey, you moved. Hey, many of you have heard. <laughs> Many of you have heard about the big changes at Cisco Systems regarding their certifications. Now, there's a whole new certification track for DevNet. That's a separate video, a separate set of videos. But in this video, I thought to myself, wouldn't it be awesome if we could have a video that was less than five minutes that gave a really good overview of those changes and how they are going to affect us so we can get the right information in a very short amount of time. That's what we're going to do in this video together right now. So let's break out the whiteboard and let's talk about the entry level certification with Cisco and that is CCT and that stands for the Cisco Certified Technician which is the entry entry level point into Cisco certification. Next we have the associate level and for the associate level we have the CCNA which is the Cisco Certified Network Associate. And unlike the previous versions of CCNA, now there's only going to be one flavor. And it's the same CCNA exam that will be taken by everybody who wants that certification. Next, as we go up, we have the professional level certs. And setting aside the DevNet certifications just for a moment, there are five CCNP, or Cisco Certified Network Professional, categories that a person can get. And one way to remember them is the acronym, Some Children Don't Eat Spaghetti with the first letters of each of those words reminding us of what each of those categories are in the professional level or the CCNP. And those five professional level certifications include service provider, collaboration, data center, enterprise, and security. And the question, and it's a good one that might come up is, okay, what if I want to get a security CCNP? How do I do that? And it's really simple. It is two exams. And of those two exams, one of those is going to be the core exam. If we're looking at security, it's going to be the core exam for security. And then one of the concentration exams. So in security, there is a single core exam. So a person would take that. And then currently there are six. I'll put them out here. There are six concentrations. And all a person would have to do is take the core for security and then any one of these concentration exams based on what they want to focus on and what they want to learn. And that combination would give them a CCNP in security. So as a review, to get a security CCNP, we take the core for security and then one of these concentrations that are associated with the security track. And poof, we're a CCNP in security. And we have similar activities for service provider. There's one core and there's three concentrations at the moment and that could grow. And that's one of the beauties. The concentrations could be replaced or grown or added to as the need arises. So this whole new certification making it more modular makes a lot of sense because they don't have to rip and replace the whole thing. They can just add or remove individual concentrations for whatever technology is important for individuals to know. For collaboration, there's one core. And at the moment of this recording, there's four concentration exams. For data center, currently it is one and five. And the actual number of concentrations that they could add that would be applicable might change over time. And that's perfectly fine. But to get a CCNP in any one of these areas, we take the core exam, let's say for data center as an example, and then one of the concentrations and poof, you're a CCNP. Now the question might come up, well, Keith, what if, what if I'm working towards the certification and I'm not done with it, do I get something for just taking the exams? And the answer is yes, if you pass. And as an example, let's say somebody's going for enterprise CCNP or they just want to focus on maybe the core exam. If they take that core exam, they get a specialist recognition. Now, I don't know exactly what they're going to call that or name that, but it's some kind of recognition, meaning that you passed that certification exam. So it basically boils down to this, with the exception of the CCNA, when you take any one of these exams, either the core or the concentrations, there are specialist or specialization awards or recognition given to that test taker who passes those exams where they can then demonstrate to their employers or others that yes, they have that specialization or that competency, even if they didn't go for the full CCNP. That's also a benefit for somebody who has a CCNP, but if they also take additional concentrations, not only will they have a CCNP, but they can also have individual specializations for those additional concentration exams that they passed. So as you and I continue to study and prepare and we pass these exams and we get more skills, we'll also have each step of the way additional recognition from Cisco in the form of specializations that indicate that we have passed those specific exams and have those specializations as a result. And then one last moment, let's talk about CCIE for a moment. If somebody wants to become a CCIE in one of these areas, what they would do is they would take the core exam, 
for example, service provider or data center or security, and then they would go and take the lab and that would get them their CCIE. So thank you for joining Mr. Sloth and myself for this quick overview of Cisco's new certification track. And I hope to see you in future videos. If you haven't already, for Pete's sake, click on subscribe, hit the alert bell. So you make sure that you know exactly when every new video comes in and I'll see you in those videos. Till then, have a great, great day.